Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done with her, how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. When he saw it, he arose, went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. He himself went a day's journey to the wilderness, came and sat down under the jumper tree. Why did he come to see that he was tired? From a day's journey. Please, take note. A day's journey, he was tired and sat under the tree. He requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough now, O oh Lord. Take my life, for I'm not better than my father's. He was so tired and so sick that he wished death from traveling a day's journey. Verse 5. As he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, an angel touched him and said, Arise and what? Eat. Now, here is food to address tiredness, weakness, and a failing health. Look, behold, it was a cake. It's not a heavenly meal that we can't describe. It's a cake. Baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. It's always a meal and water. He ate and drank, lay him down again. Then the angel of the Lord came again the second time, touched him and said, Arise, eat, for the journey is too great for thee. He arose, did eat and drink. Then he went in the strength of that meat 40 days. And 40 nights, in natural food, he went one day, he was tired. In super food, he went 40 days and 40 nights. And he was not tired. This meal you will eat today Amen. will bring a strength into your life. Amen. And at your old age, you will be like Asha. He said, let Asha dip his feet in all. He said, possess thou the north and the south. He said, let his feet be like iron and his shoes like brass. He said, as your days are, let your strength be. That's Deuteronomy 33. Let your strength be. That means that as you are getting older, you are getting stronger. It's not ordinary meal that does that. It's a blessed spiritual meal that does that in the life of a person. The Bible says Moses was 120 years. His eyes were not dim. His strength did not abate. Caleb said, 40 years ago, Moses gave me this mountain, and you all went off. Now 40 years have passed. The strength I had to fight 40 years ago is the same strength I have now. It has not fainted. It has not failed. Give me this mountain. I want to fight. Praise God. They didn't lay hands to pray for him when Elijah was weak. They didn't do all night vigil for him. They gave him food and water. And his case was solved. As you eat food and water, or it's equivalent today, <laughs> your case will be solved. Amen. It, it's a therapy from the divine. And King Hezekiah experienced the same thing in 2 Kings 20. The Bible says, was sick unto death. I thought God would say, Elijah! Elisha, Isaiah, go and do special prayers for Ezekiel. Yeah, there's a place for special prayers. The Bible says they boiled figs for him and gave him to drink. <laughs> and he was added to him 15 more years. As you eat this meal, you will live longer. Amen. If you have a covenant with death, for an age that God will not be glorified. This meal will not, that's why they call it covenant. It will knock out inferior covenants Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. This meal you're about to eat is called the bread of heaven, not the bread of the earth. Psalm 105. Psalm 105. 
I read verse 40. The people asked, and he brought quails. He satisfied them with what? The bread, the heavenly bread, not the earthly bread. The heavenly meal, he gave it to them. In John 6, 31 to 35, he said, My flesh is meat and my blood is drink. He that eats this flesh and drinks this blood shall live forever. It's a meal. This meal not only heals. We've seen it heals in Exodus 23, 25. We've seen how it gives supernatural strength for a man to keep going and just keep going and keep going. It also delivers from demonic oppression. In Matthew 15, a Syrophoenician woman came to Jesus and said, My daughter is vexed by a demon and she is sick. Please, I need your intervention, Jesus. And Jesus said, It is not right to give the children's bread, it's bread, to dogs. And she said, give me the crumbs of the bread. And the Bible says, Jesus said, great is thy faith. And her daughter was healed at that same very hour. In Acts 20, in the broke bread, in the upper chamber, when Paul was preaching, and the man fell dead from the upper uh, floor. The Bible says, after the broke bread, the man came back to life again. When you take this bread... Dead organs will come back to life. Amen. Things God didn't plant in your body will be taken out. Amen. Every aspect of your body that is sick will be healed. Amen. That amen doesn't sound like, you know. Amen. If there's any aspect of your body that's been removed surgically, as you take this meal, a brand new one, listen carefully, I have heard from God for this, a brand new one will appear Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Any ailment you have, it will be addressed. Amen. You will be healed. Amen. You will be delivered Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. A lady came to meet me once. She has two boys. And I don't know what they ate. Maybe it was poison. And they were in the hospital and they were spilling blood from their mouth. So she said, Pastor, and then she said, I only have two. I said, if you have 12, will you not trade two? I said, it doesn't matter whether you have two or 12. None should go. So it's just two. Pastor, it's just two. I don't have another one after these two. (laughs) And I could not go to pray with the children. So I called a minister in the church. I said, take bread and take Ribena. Go and meet those two boys in the hospital. I said, bless it and give them to eat and to drink. They will be well. She said, when she got there, they could only get biscuits and Fanta. (laughs) I said, it doesn't matter whether it's Fanta or whether it's, why am I saying Fanta? I don't want to advertise Fanta. No, no. Whether it's a soda drink, um, a a mineral drink or soda drink, or, you know, I didn't mention any particular biscuits, so okay. I want me to mention this. She said to me before that, praise God. She said, as they beat into the biscuit, they beat into the power of God. She said, all the bleeding seas. He said, Pastor, within an hour, they were up to play football. Power came. She said, as they drank the he said, they stood up. She said, we're well, aware, mommy, we're well, aware. Well. They said, no, you said, no, we're well, aware. Well. We want to go and join our colleagues playing football. She said, it was a quarrel. She said she had to tell the mother and the doctor, let them go. It's an act of faith from what has been happening. She said they resumed from the hospital. He said because the place where they were playing for was just behind them, to the field to play football. I once went somewhere, and I don't know why it's poison like that. And this lady had about three kids, or two or three, I can't remember. And they were all stooling. When I looked at them, they looked like skeletons. I said, what is this? So they went to a party, I don't know what they ate or so, and they've been stooling, and this, I said, get me food, and get me water, and I blessed it. Oh, glory. <laughs> and I said, give them to eat, and, give, and she did. She told me, not only did the stooling stop, he said, before then, 
say there was no two weeks they didn't fall ill. Either malaria or infection. He said when they ate that meal, they said for six months, they didn't have a single headache. Six months. Perfectly. They experienced that redemption of that post-rapture body. For six months. He said they didn't have a single... They were eating the same meal that was making them sick. They were still waking up the same time. They didn't have more rest. He said it's a six months. They didn't complain of fatigue. They wake up in the morning. They didn't look tired. They woke up strong to go to school. No head, nothing from eating meal. But it's not ordinary meal. It's the heavenly bread that is blessed. The Bible says, by faith in Hebrews eleven twenty-eight, 28, they ate the Passover meal. When they ate it, they were delivered by eating. This morning, and if you are cross watching or hearing at any point, if you are sick in your body, you can start serving the bread now. I can sense the anointing of the Holy Spirit already resting. Take whatever it is that is a meal. You know, once I went to pray for a colleague of mine in the hospital. <laughs> he was sick. He had a surgery. So he was sick. He was in Philly where he had a surgery. So I went to greet him as a member of the unit where I was. So in the hospital, while I was praying with him, one of the nurses came and said, Sir, please, I guess you're praying with that man. Can you come and help us pray for somebody upstairs who is sick? When I went up, I don't know who that woman is till today. I can't even mention the name of the hospital. It was at Iluque Jude and Teju Hospital. I can't remember who that woman is today. There was all sorts of gadgets on her body. She was in a coma. So I went to pray, and the Holy Spirit said, anoint her with oil. So I asked them to get me anointing oil. They searched, they couldn't find anointing oil. They couldn't find granite oil, so they brought palm oil. So I took the palm oil, and I anointed her, and I prayed for her. Why am I saying this? The bread doesn't have to be bread. It can be biscuits, it can be wafers, it can be rice. It can be, oh, there's a lady. She had what they call a breached, um, a breached, when the baby's baby is breached, breached, yes. So she met me on the road, said, Pastor, please, I need you to pray with me. My baby is breached. I said, when you're eating tonight, bless it that's coming on and take you, you'll be fine. And I had to rush up. So I saw her about a month later. She said, oh, guess what? That at the meal on the table, on the dining table, I blessed the meal. It was even proper food, rice. I bled the drink, juice. <laughs> and I ate and drank. He said, as I drank it, I felt like a hand. Move the baby back into its normal position. So when I went for a scan, the doctor said, wow, the baby's head is properly positioned from a meal. So when I anointed this lady with palm oil, she didn't move, so I left. The next morning, my friend that I went to greet, a minister who was still in the hospital, recovering from surgery, said he woke up and saw the lady carrying her bag. He said, Excuse me. Say yes. Say, you know the lady they prayed for yesterday? Say, I don't know anybody prayed. They did not say she's the one. Say, I, I, what happened? He said, she just woke up about an hour when the man went and said she was perfectly okay. They were giving her blood, giving her drips. She was on oxygen. They said they sent for the doctor, the consultant, who checked her and said she was perfectly okay. So my friend said, I too, I'm going. The doctor said, no. I know you're a pastor, but you are not fit. You're not ready to go. What was palm oil? Not anointing of palm oil. The woman said it was rice she ate and juice. I won't mention the juice because those people won't pay me for advert, advertoria. But it was a juice she drank and the baby moved back into position. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Surulere Lagos. Get a copy today. So if you are cross, get a meal. If it's biscuit, don't get something big. Get something small. Biscuit, water, juice, wine, whatever. You're about to bite into the power of the home. I can sense the anointing, the healing power of God. 
Some of you will have brand new organs. Brand new organs. In the name of Jesus. I want you to bow your heads and begin to pray. Begin to pray while the choir just sing that hymn. Quickly. Begin to pray. God's healing power is rested. It's resting. And it's flowing. I can feel like a wind of electricity flowing. If you have been sick and you have been treated, you will be made whole. If you are sick, you will be healed. Get the meal. Get the water or wine or whatever it is. It's your hour and your day for the redemption of your body. If you don't have a womb, a new womb will be created. If you don't have tubes, a new womb will be created. Kalebo sondo roboko ko shakataya. Hallelujah. Paul says he will bless your bread. He will bless it. When he blesses it, it changes from ordinary bread to the bread of heaven. And when he enters your body, he does what ordinary bread cannot do. Heavenly Father, Father of light, Father of glory, Father of our Lord Jesus. As everyone raises the meal, which is the symbol of the bread, whatever it may be, biscuit, rice, yam, anything, bless it. Let it become the bread of heaven above. Eat in Jesus' name. That is the blood of the New Testament. It will bring newness, new organs, new cells, new blood from the marrows. The marrows have been producing faulty blood. Infected blood this functional blood, blood with figures that are not acceptable and structures that are not acceptable. As you take this blessed wine, people take wine at parties, they're not the same. They drink wine in their house, it's not the same. This is the heavenly wine that I bring to you. Is not ordinary wine. Anywhere you may be. If it's water, if it's wine, if it's juice, raise it as I ask the Father of, Father of light and the Father of our Lord Jesus to bless it. You may drink in the name of Jesus. You may drink in the name of the Lord Jesus. And now rise to your feet, please. Inside your mortal bodies, 
have just been released. A special supernatural meal that is from above. And it has begun to do wonders in your life, in your bone marrows, Amen. your tissues, in your cells, in your organs, Amen. in your womb, in the name of Jesus. Amen. From this very day, health is your portion. Amen. I declare you healed. Of every sickness and infirmities. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, there are actually dietary recipes of fruits to even treat cancer. Are you aware of that? And they've seen 40% successes where it is appropriately administered. Whatever it is, whatever you call it, it's an immune thing. When your immune system is powerful, it will knock it out. And so these things boost your immune system such and destroy those terrible cells that are causing pain and anguish in the body. Whatever Satan might have planted in your body, take it from me, it is destroyed completely. In the name of Jesus. New strength. What you could not accomplish in your natural strength from today, you will accomplish with this new strength. Amen. Like Elijah went in natural meal. A day's journey was tired. Took the heavenly meal. Went 40 days and 40 nights. Still not tired. At your old age, you will not be wrinkled. Yeah. You will not be bent down walking. Yeah. Your strength is renewed like the eagle. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yeah. I release grace, healing grace, to flow into your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, say amen. But I'm not sick. Elijah was not sick when he took that meal to give you strength to live longer and ability to do much more in the name of Jesus. Welcome to the post rapture redemption of your human bodies. Praise Jesus. If you need to do anything further, the Holy Spirit, in whose care I leave all of you now, will tell you when a brother brought his daughter from India, where she was already diagnosed here with a hole in the heart. And I spoke with the doctor on the phone. He wasn't forthcoming. I said, no, I'm the, I'm the father. He already talked to me. Then my girl was crying. I said, well, there's nothing we can do. The best cardiac surgeon says there is nothing. Her case is beyond redemption. I said, give or take, how long does she have to live? She said, I'm sorry, I cannot tell you that. I guess they say Max's mom dies three months, die, but it can't be six months. Then they returned. The husband called me. He said, Pastor, that I just need to let you know. We bought about maybe eight hundred dollars worth of drugs. They said we're to use it till she dies. I asked, can the drug cure? They said no. Will he lengthen her from dying? They say we're not too sure. What then will he do? Is just to preserve her to die. When he called me, he said, I've thrown all the drugs in the dustbin. I said, Jesus, thank God you didn't tell me, ask whether you should throw it or I would have told you don't throw it. That's a fatherly instinct. Don't throw it. He said, I already threw everything into the dustbin. If God cannot do it, let her go. How many years ago was that? 
about seven years, right? Seven, eight years. Only through those drugs. The only thing that's ever happened to her, maybe one or two in those seven years, malaria or so, that's all, which they treated with her. Don't let me mention quartem. They say I'm a better than quartem. I'm not asking you to throw your drugs away. No. God energized him to do that. God will energize you on what to do. But I want a medical report to prove you are healed. I demand for a medical report. If you're HIV positive and you have taken and you believe you are healed, go and do a test. Then bring the results. It's not unbelief. Except the Holy Ghost speaks otherwise. And be sure it's the Holy Ghost. I salute you all for a thorough healing. Strengthening. Revitalization. A renewal of strength. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You believe it, say amen. amen. You believe it, say amen. amen. If you believe it, say amen. amen. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.